that's why Orsters Rockefeller is actually named after Tina Fey. Wow. Right? That's good information, Andrew. Right? It's it's a tidbit that not a lot of people know. Oh, hey, everybody. Whoa. <laughs> we're live? That's you crazy. You caught us here. Man, uh, we were just doing the dishes. Um, <laughs> hey, everyone. Welcome to Design in the Dark, the show where you get to make the decisions, and we scramble until we cry. Um, my name is Andrew Hockrattle, and this man over here, who are you, floating head? I am Jordan Iatt. That's who I am. <laughs> nice to meet you, Jordan. I like that there was, we need another tiny screen of someone else just over your shoulder. If I point this way, is that you? That's me, yes. Okay. Yes, yeah, you're over here, I'm over the other way. Andrew, yes. put your hand like this on your screen. No, like, oh, exactly like this. How, oh, yeah. yeah but, we can do, but then, does that work? Oh, oh, hold on, like this? <laughs> it didn't work. It didn't work. We tried it and it didn't work. I'm sorry, everyone. <laughs> Uh, yes, and this is commitment. Uh, hello, welcome, good morning. Um, our friend Kelly's here, Ariana's here, Sam Peterson. Um, oh my goodness, Garish, it is 3 a.m. in India? My goodness, there's a replay. I mean, like, hang out and engage with chat and have fun if you want to. But also, you can take a nap and then watch this uh, a little bit later on the replays. Uh, as always here on Adobe Live, you can always watch on YouTube and catch up. Um, this is Design in the Dark, one more time. And this is the show where we take suggestions from you, chat, and our artist today is Jordan. Um, we'll be executing those ideas and we'll be having a bunch of fun talking through process um, and just having a grand old time. So if you have suggestions, if you have thoughts for literally anything, throw them in chat. I will act as curator and I will pass them on to Jordan. Um, and Jordan, I wanna show everyone a little bit of your work just so they're familiar with it before we jump in. So okay. can you tell us a little bit um, about your work and where people can find you on the interwebs? Yeah, sure. So uh, probably the best place to find me is at iot.jordan on Instagram. Uh, and my name is somewhere there. So it's like the reverse. My last name's Iot. I know it's spelled weird. It's okay. Uh, and one, uh, one of my favorite things to do is character design. I love uh, creating characters. I love creating um, the model sheets for them. And one of my favorite things to do are time lapses. I love to time lapse my drawing, put them together so people can see my process. Um, and so a lot of my posts on Instagram that you'll find uh, are the final piece with the time lapse that goes along with it. And uh, I love just the spirit of figuring something out and keeping the drawings loose and finding like my favorite, the, the part that I like the most is just the rough sketch. I love seeing anyone's rough sketch. I love looking at sketchbooks and so Instagram is my sketchbook with a lot of um, time lapses of the final piece. Sweet, so go check that out. I believe you just posted a new piece for Samurai Jack, one of my favorite shows. I believe that we talked about it the last time that you were on the show. Yeah. Um, we talked about the black and white fight scene, which is really cool. We did. Yeah, so glad to see the inspiration just rolling along. Yeah, um, I... So let's go ahead, Jordan, today, and we're gonna jump in and get everyone in on the loop. Um, first of all, chat, let's get warmed up. Let's get, let's get warmed up a little bit. Let's stretch our fingers. Oh, I hit my mic. Let's stretch our fingers out a little bit, do some of these, and I want you to type where in the world you're watching from. Uh, you are going to be typing a ton on this show. Um, how it works is we have a Mad Lib, basically, that we will read to you, and you all, yes, type, 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 will get to fill in that Mad Lib. So you need to be ready, you need to be willing, and you need to be putting things in chat so that we can engage and that we can actually get something done today, because uh, we definitely want to do that for you. So I'm going to recap a little bit of what we did last time, and Jordan, do you want to talk uh, a little bit about about what we did last time while I pull yeah. up? Yeah, you you show them. So um, our challenge was to illustrate the next chapter in a children's book. So it wasn't the first chapter and it wasn't the last. It was somewhere smack in the middle. And uh, we needed you guys to come up with a character who was Noah. That's who you guys came up with. And Noah was being chased by something and there were so many different levels of things. Uh, and in each element, you guys got to choose what I drew. And it was really fun. In fact, I think that like, we could just keep making a children's storybook together live, which I think would be maybe something that no one has ever done before. Uh, and how it's cool true. to be the first people to make a live children's book. So right? we're gonna continue on that adventure today. Um, I don't know, Andrew, are they able to see some of the stuff that we worked on last time? Yeah, so I'll read read through kind of where we were. So last time we started in chapter 10, our hero Noah, which is right here, was being attacked by a dragon who was shooting flaming tennis balls. The lab was infested with rats. They were radioactive rats. Um, and then we had a mad scientist that was controlling it all from a ball pit. So if that yep. sounds crazy, it's because you, chat, made it crazy. Uh, you got to make all those decisions. And then we did a second day where we did the cover 
of the book, uh, which is right here. And the cover of the book ended up being something that um, he was riding down the stairs um, and he was in an upside down underwater world being attacked by, um, do you remember the square jellyfish, Jordan? I do. I love the square jellyfish. They're my favorite and the upside down world, which just yes. threw me for a loop. Yes. The jelly squares is one of my favorite things that you have come up with the chat. So today we are continuing on with that. We're going to do something a little bit different. Um, today we're going to be doing uh, one thing and then tomorrow building it out further into the story. So here's what I need from you chat is I need some kind of animal. We're going to be working today on character design. Jordan said that he loves character design and we're going to be working on a mascot. We're going to be doing a character design for a mascot, um, and this will be for Noah's school. I'll read you a little bit of the story in a second, but first up, chat, let's get started. Let's loosen it up and put some animals in chat that could be mascots. Jordan, what was your school mascot growing up? Oh, my school mascot. I have a story for this, too. Uh, my school mascot was the lion, which was really cool. We, we were the royals, okay. and I remember that uh, the teachers knew that I liked to draw, so they they asked if I would draw a lion for our school ID card. And there was another friend named Kyle that I drew with all the time. And so I didn't tell him that I got to draw the official lion for our ID card. And so when they came out, I went up to him and I was like, hey man, what do you think? And he was like, oh yeah, I got my card back, but this lion's terrible. And I was like, oh no. And so I never told him. And now yes. I kind of just spilled the beans here. But I love it that. broke my heart. And it probably wasn't a very good lion because I think I was like in fourth or fifth grade. So hopefully I got better. Oh, what about I you? Had, Andrew? What was your mascot? Uh, my mascot was the Vike. Well, uh, a, a couple. I played for two separate high schools in basketball. And so one school was the Vikings. And then I played for another school and they were the Trojans. Um, and so we had the Vikings and the Trojans. So I was in very much like just like a war zone for yeah. most of it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, it was a little bit crazy. Um, a gator face plat platypus. We have a pig. We have a penguin. We have bulldogs. We have turtles. Um, lots of suggestions. Keep them coming in. Um, and I think the one that I like and the only reason is because they were actually my rival in high school. So when I played for the Trojans, the rival school was in Folsom and they were the bulldogs. Uh, and so it was bulldogs. always the Trojans versus the Bulldogs, which feels like classic, not a fair fight. Um, classic mascot. Yes. So we're going to go with the Bulldogs um, for this one today. And okay. Jordan, let's hop in and start making some Bulldog mascot. Um, let's do that. What uh, are you so working in today? What's your workflow? Tell us about it. Exactly. I am working in uh, Fresco, Adobe Fresco. And I kind of want to walk through what my process would be if the challenge, which is before us, is to design a character. Cool. Uh, so the first thing that I would do, no matter what, is to find reference for this, this character, whatever it would be. And it doesn't need to be an actual character. It could be a house or a ship or a boat. Um, and for me, a lot of times I, you know, I have maybe a thought in my head of, of what the character might look like but honestly, sometimes I need reference. And uh, I think reference is a very important thing uh, because it can show you the different shapes of, well, actually, in fact, so I would say that uh, the Millennium Falcon is probably the most recognized spaceship in science fiction movies, right? Yes. But it, it wasn't originally going to be. Um, see, George Lucas, when they, when they first worked on the Millennium Falcon, they wanted it, that it looked very similar to the spaceship from 2001, A Space Odyssey. And George said, hey, we can't just copy theirs. And so they were, all of the designers were wrestling with, what do we do? What's what's a new thing? And so, so George, uh, this is the story apparently. He was out to lunch and he was eating a cheeseburger and he took a bite out of it. The best uh, inspiration comes from food. Yeah, he took a bite out of it. And it also had a Kalamata olive next to it that was kind of sticking out. And he saw that shape and he took it back to the designers and he said, hey, how about you make a spaceship that looks like a hamburger? And that yes. is where we get our hamburger spaceship was That's because crazy. of the reference. So the reference doesn't always have to be um, exactly what you're looking at. But since today we're not making a spaceship, we're making a bulldog. I thought we could use some reference from a, a source. Let me pull it up. We're gonna go to, we're gonna go to stock. 
dot adobe.com. So I just like split the screen on my iPad so I can take a look at some images here. This is a great place with like millions of images. Yes, to great look resource at for finding purchase. reference. So I'm gonna look for Bulldog, see what we can find. Uh, in chat, let me know what the this. Bulldog is called. We already have some names uh, coming in. Let me know what the name of the Bulldog is and we can incorporate <laughs> that in as we keep going. And that way we'll have some way to reference it so it's not just Bulldog. So uh, drop some names in there. Could be your favorite name, could be a silly name, whatever you want, uh, drop it in there. Okay, so I just picked a random photo and usually I would put together a bunch of these, but for right now, we're gonna go with this uh, Bulldog on Adobe Stock. And right now, the next step after finding a bunch of reference for me would be to try to figure out the shapes. And I wanna make them unique, I wanna make them interesting. So we're gonna try to kind of identify what is unique about this dog uh, instead of some other dogs. So I'm noticing that there is just a squatty little nose. It's actually very a very square shape. So we're gonna draw a square shape. And look at the folds. Look at those folds over the nose. And we got a lot of lippage going on. I've seen a lot of lip. And it looks like kind of a pouty face. A lot of wrinkles. A lot of wrinkles, triangle ears. Okay. It's so interesting how, right, it looks like a bunch of like random lines and it's like, oh, he's just like doing shapes and like laying down roughs. And then suddenly you're like, oh, it's, it's like a thing uh, that you're just converting what's in the real world and breaking it down through like, what if it was basic shapes? What would those shapes look like? Yeah, exactly. So uh, to be honest, having just a square is it's not taking our design far enough. So instead I'm gonna create a new layer and I'm gonna to try to, it looks like there's kind of a rectangle at the top and then a bigger rectangle down below. So we're gonna work off of, this is gonna be our, our shape. Uh, yeah. And I only say that you could make many different types of shapes, right? We could, we could just keep this idea and do a complete square with a very tiny rectangle Actually, let's do that. So look, here, we're gonna keep uh, our nose and everything exactly placed where it was. But we're going to change the shape and we'll get a completely different design. Yep, and this is almost like what happens with, let's say like the pop figures, right? That they have these little like figures that are all the same. And they're saying, okay, cool. Let's break down the features of these characters onto this set basic shapes. And then it readapts each of those characters into being a cohesive collection of like thousands and thousands of different characters for these little pop collectibles. All right, so I'm gonna work on another one and I'm gonna try exploring different styles. Cool. I'm gonna work quick. I'm not, there's gonna be no erasing I want to keep the ideas flowing. And uh, and we do have a winner for the name. Uh, Clever, yes. De, uh, Clever Devlin, you are the winner for our uh, name. Uh, the Bulldog is going to be named Bulloni. Yes, um, Bulloni. Bulloni the Bulldog. Okay, so I'm liking that. Yeah. And And seriously, like we just said, it's really just the two shapes. And when you're so doing you this, are you thinking, I know that like caricatures, they're like exaggerate certain things. Are you thinking through that, like as a character that you're like, okay, what do I want to be bigger or smaller? Or how are you deciding on the proportions? So I'm honestly letting some of the shapes decide for me. Um, and I'll show you that right now. So let's create another layer and we're going to keep this exact same shape. But yes, of course I'm, I am trying to exaggerate some of the features that I that I saw. Um, so here is that shape again, right there. There's our shape, just the basic shape that we're working with, but now we're gonna flip it upside down. So instead of even needing to do a new shape, we're gonna literally flip it upside down. I put the nose on the line, so we're gonna keep going. So I, I can tell so you right now- I so excited about this happening. Because there's a huge dome on this bulldog, uh, and we're gonna just literally draw the same image. That's cool that it's literally just the proportions that you've taken your template, changed the template, but all the pieces go in the same places and it creates something completely new, even though it's exactly the same. 
Yeah, and imagine imagine that we that we changed the width of the eyes or we moved uh, the nose down. So there are so many options. Once you can kind of figure out what shape you want to go with. And so usually with little kiddos, they have these huge noggins with these big eyeballs. And so just by changing, flipping this over, like I would say that this looks like a young bulldog. It does. It looks like a like a like an angry little puppy bulldog. Yeah. You know what it reminds me of? Okay, this is the difference between the Looney Tunes and like the the like Toon Babies or whatever they're called. Totally. Um, okay, so I, now what I want to do is because you've noticed that I've been drawing these bulldogs completely from the front. Um, I want to talk about the next thing that I would do if I was when, when drawing a character. Um, and that would be that I would suggest to always be able to draw the character from the front and from a three-fourths view, which is just yep. in the side. Uh, and the reason why, let me show you. Um, we're gonna keep the same shape and we'll just do the bigger rectangle. Now, here's why I would say that. So here's from the three-fourths view and I, I, this happens to me all the time. So we wanna do something really crazy. So we make a humongous nose, making it a little bit more unique. We make these tiny, teeny little eyes. And we'll put the, the lips there. Okay, and I honestly like this. This is actually really fun. It's got some very cartoony feel to it. Okay, yeah, that's so here's, fun. here's our drawing right here. But here's what would happen now. We have the three force view. And what if we were to put it in the front? Take a look at how tall the nose is oh. compared to the eyes. Yeah, so now gonna... if we draw this from the front view again, here's the front view and it's got that smirk. And let's just finish the head. Uh-oh. It's just gonna completely block him from the front even though it looks what great happened? from the three fourths, yeah. Right. So. Uh, after finding reference and figuring out the shape, messing with the shape, which we could just go on for days and days and days, um, I want to make sure that I can draw the image from the front and from a three-fourths view. If you if you get that far, then you'll be golden, and and uh, and then be able to like make it physical too. Because I imagine if you draw something on paper, right, it's one thing. But then if you think about like merchandising, then it's like, oh, we literally designed it so that his nose is his whole face. And if we made something like we wouldn't be able to do that, like it's physically yeah. impossible. So I think that let me go ahead and try to draw our three fourths view. Um, I need to see that one. Sweet. Okay, I had a friend so... who used to draw reverse three fourths and he called it the church view because it was like you were sitting behind someone in like a pew and looking like from the back. And so you draw like the side back of their head. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is instead of just doing just a rectangle, I'm gonna treat it like a box. Okay. So we have, I'm gonna make it like it's 3D. Cool. So here is our actual shape. And the reason I'm doing this is because it'll help us with our proportions. So I'm gonna move the center line Right now I'm turning the view of this top one right here. And you're doing the same thing with the different boxes having the different features, but now they're just cubes instead of being flat boxes, right? Exactly. And we can draw our bulldog again now from a three force view. And this is very similar to that first one that I drew. A grumpy boy. Yeah, He's the perfect amount of, of like not quite angry, not quite grumpy, but still like a little threatening. Yeah. Um, let me see. Let me move some of these over. Cool. And while you do that, I'm going to go over real quick with the chat um, what our brief is. Uh, we actually do have a story that we'll be filling in more tomorrow, but I want to give you some of the context of what we are doing today. So I'm going to hop over uh, to the two up screen and I'm going to read to you um, our story and maybe we can plug in some more things here. So. 
here's where this chapter is going. The big game is coming up for Noah's school. Noah's our hero. We'll deal more with him tomorrow. Um, and Noah's school is named blank. Um, and he is going up against his rival school, blank. And that's where you can put something in chat. Let me know what the rival school is named. Um, and keep in mind that the bulldog is the mascot of the rival school. So let me know what the name of that school is. We can plug it in. Uh, next week, we will see the two schools face off head to head to crown a champion. Noah has a plan to sneak into the rival school and steal their mascot bulldog, Baloney. He's unaware of the curse on the mascot and has no idea of the curse from blank. Noah's school, school name, was founded in the years and we'll deal with the rest of that tomorrow. So today we're gonna to be covering what the rival school's um, uh, uh, mascot is. We have named him Baloney already and I need a name for the rival school and then eventually near the end of the stream, we'll figure out that deep dart secret for this rival school. Uh, so now we've talked about the different shapes. So instead, I'm going to just do a big old, I'm going to change the shape again. But now I want to talk a little bit about emotion because we found our reference, we found our shape that we're working with. But in this one, I'm going to try to make him look mean. He's going to have snarling teeth. Ooh. And I'm going to turn those eyebrows up even more, make the under the eyes even darker. And so another thing you can work on is what is it? Now I have the shapes I like, but how do I add? more emotion to my character. So if you, um, anyone in chat watched Office Hours last weekend, we talked about semiotics and how to communicate visually. And this was actually a big point, right? That we talked about indexes give information. Um, and I used my eyebrows that I was like, eyebrows are face indexes. They can tell you when I'm happy, when I'm angry, when I'm confused. And Jordan, that's what you're doing, right? You're taking the things that indicate in humans what would be an emotion and then putting that into an animal that like if our ears are perked up, if our teeth are showing, if our eyebrows are slanted, that we understand those, that you're just applying that to the character, right? Yeah, absolutely. And it, the shapes are not changing at all. I'm, I'm barely changing any of that stuff. I'm just, I'm accentuating and exaggerating and characterizing each of these elements of our bulldog character. Actually, I'm gonna try to, I'm gonna have this one on actually on all fours. I like this design. Here's what I'd say though, it's a little bit scary. So I'm it reminds me of up. like the bane of bulldogs. Yeah. Like it's definitely got have, bane vibes. He could have some dripping, drooling teeth. If we wanted to go that far. But this is now found our reference, found our shapes. And I mean, it's very similar to this one right here. But this one is definitely a little bit happier than uh, than this one down here. So instead, I'm gonna go, now that we have that, and the reason I do this is each time I draw this character, I become a little bit more familiar with it. Uh, I can I can change the angle. Now, now I'm purposely drawing it in the three-fourths view. I tend to do that um, more often because I want to be to make sure that I can make it from the front and the side. And so I wanna see all of how far the nose is out. Um, but instead of going towards the angry side, I'll actually want to go towards the cute side now. So let's just oh, do yeah. one that is a little bit more rounded and a little bit more cute. And again, using those indexes that instead of sharp angles, instead of abrupt lines, it's probably going to be softer, more rounded, right, Jordan? That's, you just called it, my friend. Yes. Okay, so same shapes, the smaller on top, the bigger down below but we're going to round everything out and we're, you know what? I'm not even going to make this one angry. So this will be, this will be just a cute little mascot. Actually, I want to talk about something. So uh, some of you guys might say, how do you make the eyeballs look like they're looking straight at you? And that's actually really easy. So um, what you'll do is you'll put one eye uh, eyeball, the iris in the middle, and then the other one close to the side. And what that does is it makes it look like it's looking directly at you. If I put it in the middle, eh, I mean, it kind of does. If I put it over here, that's a whole that's, different character. Yep, that's Gritty. Have you seen Gritty, the uh, the mascot? Yeah. for, And his eyes kind of just like wiggle whatever direction. <laughs> yep. So now it's going to be the epitome of cute. Cute is huge heads. <gasps> cute is... Oh, look at his little tongue. <laughs> Cute is big eyeballs, tiny little nose, and you can change that up. 
But oh if you look goodness. at a lot of things that are cute, I kind of like what's happening with the closing it in with the. He Maybe he looks like he just ears. like stole like two meatballs and he has them in his mouth still, but he's like, "Don't you love me still?" And I'm like, "Yes, I love you still." I love you. I'm actually gonna do one more. So we have a mean one, we have a cute one, and what I would do next is probably what can I do to just go crazy? Yep. Just one that is just going wild off card. The deep end. Yep. So we're gonna we're just gonna keep it the cute design, but make it bigger. We are just going to make it way bigger. All right, so. All right, so the winner, um, Ariana, it is going to be called Knoxville Academy is the Ooh. rival school's name, Knoxville. The Knoxville Bulldogs. That actually goes together really well. I like that a lot. I do like that. So I'm going to keep that same mouth open. But I'm going to push. I, I would just encourage you. That's why I'm not drawing this once and moving on push the design, make the shapes bigger, smaller. Um, it adds interest, it adds character. And so I'm keeping that same dog mouth that's open, but I just made him squattier. I made him fatter, I made him chunkier. I'm gonna, instead of the spikes, he'll just have a normal. Okay, actually, uh, so one another thing you can do is you can change the placement of the eyes. So I could do okay. the eyes right here. But we kind of already oh done that. Gosh. I could do, so I think I'm going to put the eyes over here. Oh my gosh. If you ever need live feedback, Jordan, like you don't have to describe anything to me. I'll just watch your screen and you can get reaction from what my body does as you put things onto your characters. Yes. Oh, look at his little eyes. So I actually really like this one. Oh. I and if I didn't purposely try to push the design as far as I could, and we could go even farther, um, then we wouldn't even have this one. So push your design, find out your shapes, get some reference, change the shapes, change the angles, make sure it works from the front and from the back. And this one's actually really fun. I might actually try to finish this one. Can I make a request, Jordan? Yeah. This is gonna put you on the spot, but that's what this show's about. Can can we yeah. draw a version of him that is mid jump where his jowls are like floating like he's yeah. like just on the way down of jumping and all of his like skin and extra things are just floating in the air. Maybe some drool. That's what we're here for on this show, y'all. <laughs> we make wild suggestions and we put the artist on the spot and then they have to do it. So th that's, that's the fun part. Um, let's get a little bit more information from you, chat. Um, we need to have a celebrity, um, a celebrity that has graduated from Noah's school. Um, so give me any celebrity and we'll deal with that a little bit more tomorrow, but we want a little bit of context about who that celebrity is. Um, and that way we can work it into our design tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow we'll be making a complete piece with the mascot as well as Noah's adventure into breaking into this other school. There's going to be a curse involved, a lot of information from you chat to put in there tomorrow. So give me a celebrity name and we will incorporate that tomorrow. <sighs> Look at his cheeks. <laughs> oh my gosh. And so we'll build out the folklore a little bit. This is actually why they call him baloney is because when he runs, his cheeks look like they're just two slices of That's baloney. Funny. Just I love that. Just like, and yes, I love that so much. Oh my goodness. Little okay. baloney. Uh, so I want to just show you one more example of... Let me make a duplicate. Actually, so we're gonna take this drawing and I wanna show you, hey, if you liked half of what, you're, what you did there, you're like, hey, these are the right shapes. Let's just actually draw over this one. We're gonna do a draw over. Oh, it's on this one, I guess. Oh yeah, yeah, I made that for you, Andrew. Yes. Um, so you like a lot of what you did here, but you wanna change something so i'm gonna change the eyes i'm gonna change no i'm gonna change literally everything we're gonna keep the same shape okay we're gonna keep the shape so i'll draw it again right okay and it looks like you're using this almost as tracing paper now that you've just made a new yeah. layer and it's almost like it's tracing paper just sitting over your other layers 
Yeah. And so let's move, let's move everything around. So Ooh. like everything that was somewhere, we're going to move somewhere else. So instead of the nose up here, we're going to move the nose down here. And we're just going to figure out what this is going to be. Yes. Okay. So here's, we're going to make the mouth down here too. And yes, I don't Valeria, even know if this is going to look like a bulldog. I agree, but. Valeria. Baloney is a top tier name for a bulldog. Oh, yeah. I can already tell that I'm going to be terrified with this one. <laughs> but I'm going to keep the same shape. Wow, this is... <laughs> this is lot. crazy. Please keep going. Please I'm gonna keep, keep going. going. Um, all right, so the celebrity that attended Noah's high school is mm -hmm. going to be none other than our friend Antonio Banderas. Um, what? Antonio Banderas. Uh, Jordan, this looks like something from um, like Oddworld, like one of the Oddworld games where it's just yeah. like the bulgy eyes and just tons of saggy extra skin. <laughs> and I only do that to show that you can keep the same shape that you found that you were, you like working with. And I kept the exact same shape, but I just moved some of the, the features. Yes. Sam Peterson says... This is not says, our mascot, by the way. This he's is not our mascot. gorgeous. <laughs> okay. So uh, so we have Antonio Banderas, and what else? Um, that is just going to be the celebrity name. And then we had Knoxville Academy was the name of the school. Love it. Banderas. I'm taking notes on these. Uh, and just so you know, chat, we are taking notes on these on my side till we rewrite the story as we go. So we're writing a little bit of the story today. We're really focusing in on that mascot today to really dial it in, get a good mascot going. And then tomorrow we'll build out the illustration a little bit more for the story that we're making. Um, so Jordan, what's next in our mascot build besides those flappy baloney cheeks? Well, yeah, those flappy baloney cheeks. Uh, you said that this was a... You said that this was the rival school's mascot? Yes. Okay, so I think that that comes in to play here. Okay. Because I think that when I hear that, it would be something more on that would lean towards scary than cute. And while I love the cute one, and I'm probably going to finish that one, um, and I love the baloney flaps, I'm probably going to pick some of the, the features that make him a little bit more scary, intimidating. So when we work yep. with him tomorrow... Uh, that it'll actually be something, a formidable foe. Totally, and um, so that's great thinking of the context creatively that this is a children's book and we want to play into the trope a little bit that the rival is like mean and aggressive. And so instead of making it cute with the flappy little cheeks, as much as we love them, it doesn't really suit us to root against this rival school. And so you, we may need to make it a little more uh, aggressive. Yeah, so... Um... Bologno Dogaris. You guys, what, what y'all in chat need to calm down for Antonio Banderas, oh. uh, Bologna, and Dog <laughs> uh, This is solid gold. So one of the things I would encourage you is to uh, not stop the flow of what you're working on. So don't focus on, oh, that eye's a little bit off or I should erase here. You, you can see all of my markings over everything um, because you're just trying to get stuff out here. Uh, which leads us to our next step. But first, I want to actually show you a setting that you can change on Fresco. Um, so a lot of times I want to make a straight line. Yep. Uh, and they have the ruler tool that you can use. But in case you're saying, how do I make a straight line without the ruler? Let me show you guys. Uh, it's actually, I just want to show this. It's a simple setting. You go up to settings right here. Then you click on app settings. And then like you'll start in general. So click on input and then you see snap line. It's down at the bottom holding yep. at the end of a stroke will create a straight line. If you turn that on, then you guys can draw your line. You hold it. Bing. Oh, and it'll make a straight line in case you needed that in case you didn't want to use the ruler. And it actually keeps the pressure sensitivity that you've used on that line as well. So if you do a soft line to start and then it gets, you know, a little more uh, thick at the end, it will keep that pressure sensitivity and just straighten it out for you. Yeah. So honestly, will you ask chat and I'm going to tell you what some of my features are, but what any of the features that they like? Oh, yeah. Um, chat. Have we used um, Fresco a lot? What things do you love about Fresco? What do you use on the daily when you're sketching, when you're drawing or painting? Um, Jordan, what are your some of favorites? That wasn't a sentence. Jordan, what are yours? 
what are some of your favorite features? Those are the words. Um, I love all the, the brushes and let me, I'm going to go into my favorites. So take a screenshot. If you want this, here's my favorite brushes to work with. Um, and then the lifesaver are the vector brushes. Uh, yes. I love the vector brushes so much. Um, and we're actually going to use those today, but it's so awesome that you can draw at any scale and then be able to scale up and down and send it to illustrator. Um, which I yep. love to do. And especially with some other things coming to iPad um, soon, it would be great to have vectors that you can work with um, in some other programs that may be appearing on other platforms. What? I know, secrets. So, I don't think it's a secret anymore, but yeah, there, there are things coming. I think we're gonna try to, to do some type of final design. And then, uh, so I'm gonna rough that out. Cool. And then I'm going to use a vector brush to make a vector of it. Um, but what I would do now is if I had a page on my sketchbook of different drawings, um, what I would do is pick out the things that I like. Uh, so I honestly like the shape of this guy right here. I like the shape of him. I like, I like his eyeballs. I like the bigger ears. Okay. These ones are smaller and I like that there's teeth. I think the teeth is something that I want to work with. And I definitely just like this guy period, yep. but I will save him for another, another round. So I like the shape of this one. I like the shape of this one. I like the eyes of this one. I do like the teeth, but I don't want to make it so angry. I like the tongue being open, but I want to see the teeth. Well, and we've got about 15 minutes left, Jordan, for today. And um, I think what I'm going to do is instead of having our bulldog on all fours, especially thinking about us figuring out something with the mascot tomorrow, uh, I'm going to try to put him in a pose where he's standing. Cool. So with that said, I'm going to start working on that final sketch. Cool. Uh, chat, we're going to do a giveaway because uh, I feel like it. Uh, that's the joys of being on my streams. You get free stuff sometimes. Um, we're going to do a giveaway for um, one of my fonts. Um, I'll let you pick it. Uh, what I want to hear from you in chat is I want you to pick uh, something that can go on the collar of this, uh, our baloney dog, our baloney bulldog. Uh, we'll put like a little shape, a charm of some sort. What is something that we can put on the collar? Uh, my favorite answer, I'll send you one of my fonts. You'll get to pick it out. So go ahead and drop those in chat. Uh, and as Jordan draws us out with the vector brushes, we can get that locked in. I'm actually going to sketch it first and then I'm going to vectorize it. Uh, also, what was the, did we come up with a school? Uh, yes, this, the school was called Knoxville Academy. Uh, that was uh, submitted by our friend, I believe, Ariana. So thank you so much, Ariana. Um, Knoxville Academy. And get those uh, get those uh, collar charms going in chat, everyone. I'll pick one and we'll do a little giveaway. Give away some free fonts here. So now I'm going to just try to do a final sketch before I vectorize it using all those elements that I liked. I like the big eyes, I like the big ears. I like the teeth. And I have to think, this is a mascot and it needs to kind of fit our other designs. This is probably where I'm gonna get quiet. Oh, I will talk then. Um, I one. definitely like that as you're even with the idea of like, here's a sketch, here's where we're going. We have it like a little more dialed in. You're still laying out those basic shapes that it's just like circle, circle, oval, oval, square, like little wobbly square, and then some stuff at the bottom for the legs that it's all built on that core of its simple shapes that have been kind of adapted to something. 
Uh, and as creatives, I think that it's our job to translate the real world into the digital world. And I love character design because it really is that. It's taking something in the real world, right? A bulldog that wouldn't stand, that wouldn't be wearing clothes, all those things and saying, okay, how do I translate that? So it still communicates a bulldog, but it is stylized and unique. Um, let's see some uh, asterisk is a great idea. Um, a whistle. I love a whistle. Are we talking about like a coach whistle? Because I love the idea of him being like having like a coach whistle, like he's a coach bulldog um, and not just oh, like, fun. right? Like instead of a leash, it's like a whistle. Um, I love that. All right, Tia, you are our winner. Tia Reed, um, go ahead and send me a DM here on Behance. Uh, slide into my DMs and I will send you my font shop for you to pick one out and I will send it to you for free. Congratulations, you are our winner. Um, and I, RB, I love that suggestion, just a slobber, a, a singular slobber. <laughs> one slobber, please. One slobber, please. Nice, so as you're building this out, Jordan, um, this is like, I know that you love animation, you love old cartoons, um, you love like voice acting and that kind of stuff. Are you, yeah. are you at all putting a voice to him as you create him in your head? Uh, it's a little bit of that, but I'm also just thinking about what are we gonna do tomorrow? Like I know that if he's going to, if Noah's going to the rival school, he needs an intimidating character. So uh, I think that like literally I'm thinking, how do I make this still fun and cute, but something that's like he's big and, and mean and something that Noah is not gonna wanna go against. Yep, tomorrow. that's funny the thinking, especially with the kids book of the potential for, oh, what if Noah, like convinces him to like change his ways or like he joins Noah on his team or something. Oh, that'd but then be it becomes cool. like, oh cool, we have to make him like intimidating enough to be kind of like scary for kids to read and be like, oh man, that's scary. But then easily transferable to be like, okay, we don't want it to be so scary that kids hate it. Like we still want it to be a likable character. Yeah. Uh Yay, winners. And we said a whistle, right? Yes. A whistle. Whistle. Um, okay, so earlier, Jordan, you were talking about right paying attention to the three fourths and how like a uh, character works in 3D. Have you seen any characters that like you see on a TV show or an animation that you're like, that's a cool character, and then see it somewhere as like a stuffed plushie or something, and you're like, oh, that did not translate well. Yeah, I mean, all the time, um, and I think that like, I I love. I love 2D and I would imagine that these people love 2D as well. But then you think about merchandise and you go, oh man, we never thought through how to make this work um, in 3D. So like one example would be Stewie from Family Guy. Um, he's kind of a football shape yep, and totally works in 2D. They figured out how to do front and three fourths and all of that. But if you've ever seen a toy or a 3D model of Stewie, it just doesn't work because yes. he wasn't designed to be in 3D, but they, it was a show that, that warranted merchandise. And so they tried to, to uh, sell Stewie and he looks crazy in 3D. Yep. Uh, I feel like the other thing that comes to my mind is the story that I remember seeing um, about Mickey Mouse. Um, and and what it was, it was from a video game called Castles of Illusion. If you guys have ever, please give me a shout out if you've ever played Castles of Illusion on the Genesis. Ooh, I've well, they remade really the game a couple years ago in 3D and they had to figure out how to um, do his ears. Because if you look at Mickey in 2D, no matter which way he turns, no matter which way he turns, his ears are perfectly circle, yep. which just isn't realistic. So when they moved him to 3D, they had to do like, there's this documentary on the making of this this game. They had to figure out how do we make his ears, like look, just me turning right here. Once I get to that profile shot, my ears would be flat, but they had to like move his ears around in 3D and you're watching this video going, next time I draw something, I'm gonna make sure I can draw it from all the different angles. Yep. Uh, and so my suggestion would be front and three fourths. If you can get that far, you can figure out the rest. Um, but just thinking, Mickey Mouse is so iconic and his ears are always round. If we put him in 3D, how do we? So they had to do all of this animation to make it so it looked like his ears. If you watch it, his ears are moving around on his head just to stay yep. as a circle. That's yeah. crazy. Um, so um, from here, so, we have a pretty finalized sketch. What's happening next? Uh, so next, 
I'm going to take our vector brush, okay. which means that once I'm done with this, we can scale it up and down. Actually, I think I'm just gonna do, I'm just gonna vectorize his head right okay, now. Cool. Instead of the whole body, I'll vectorize his head. Yep. Um, and maybe tomorrow I can put it in some kind of type lockup or we can have something that has a school name or something in there. Yeah. Um, and that way we could have like a cool little uh, badge kind of to put in there. Yeah. All right, here we go. And this is um, in traditional medium, right? We talk a lot about translating from the real world into the digital world. This is exactly what like a comic book artist would do that they're doing, right? We had our base sketch and then Jordan did the opacity layer and that turned into almost a tracing paper over. And now he'd be doing what's called inking, which is going in and laying down permanent inks. Can't change these. They're much more clean lines, not kind of the graphite pencil. Um, and Jordan, you're just looking for really the the kind of dark parts that you want to pull out the the lines that you want to stay consistent right yeah and you know i'm picturing too once again this is a mascot so we might end up on a shirt so this needs to be able to be printed and all of that that's true we we did um jordan and i did a little zine together um and we ended up having to do print separations for a two color risograph printing and I'm gonna tell you, if if you don't pay attention to that on the front end and try to do it on the back end, it becomes so difficult to try to separate. And so think about the applications, right? That, okay, we have this great illustration of this bulldog, uh, our friend Baloney, he's gonna need to be on a shirt, so we need a vector version of it, right? We can't just have a raster version or a photo, we have to have a vector version so that it can blow up onto the basketball court uh, or whatever. Also, we haven't decided what sport we're playing. Um, Chat, I need you to tell me what sport are these two high schools um, rivals going up against? Is it basketball, is it soccer, volleyball, badminton, curling? Uh, what sport are we attending with these two mascots? Ooh, little whiskers. Yeah. Um, so it's funny because the same way that I think about type when I'm looking for a typeface and trying to figure out like, who the typeface is, and in my brain, I'm trying to like say it over and over. How is this communicating? It's kind. I'm kind of starting to do the same thing with this character, right? That I'm like, okay, how would he say this? How is he saying that? Um, what is his body language telling me? How would he communicate? Like, all those things. Oh yeah, and that's the that's the, like the fun thing about character design is when somebody latches onto it and then they put a voice to it, and you can kind of you can see your character come to life. And I love character design for that. Yep. Um, great answer, Merc uh, Merc uh, Mercurial Mercurial Forte. Um, uh, oh, that's a familiar name. I think you've done the daily creative challenges for Illustrator with us. Um, fencing, I love that. The two high schools are facing off Ooh. with fencing. That's Super fun. Cool. And Jordan, we have about four-ish minutes left. Um, so it feels like we're getting towards it and I just wanted to let you know. Thanks, man. So tomorrow, everyone, um, while Jordan finishes this, I'll keep his screen up as well. Uh, but I'm going to go over the schedule a little bit. Uh, so tomorrow, um, we have a very similar schedule to what happened today. We're starting off with some of the daily creative challenges, some morning streams. Um, I'll be back at 1130 tomorrow with the daily creative challenge. And then Peter's back at, right before this show tomorrow. And we'll be... Excuse me. We'll be back at 2:30 tomorrow for the next daily creative challenge, or sorry, for the next episode of Design in the Dark. Um, and uh, I will also be live in four hours from now for the daily creative challenge from this morning. We're doing another stream for our friends in Australia, um, so you can tune in for that. And Rob Zilla is in the chat. Um, Rob Zilla is an amazing illustrator, um, incredible illustrator. And it's always fun when we see him pop in, especially with a legend like Jordan. Um, Rob, you need to hit up Jordan. You, you and Jordan would be friends. I feel like y'all are, are like top tier. Um, and this is twice, Rob. What are, you, what are you doing today? Just hanging out in chat all day? Um, so for those of you just joining us, Design in the Dark, we uh, took a suggestion from chat to create a mascot for a school. The suggestion was a bulldog. That bulldog is named Baloney. Um, he wears a uh, referee whistle around his neck and he is uh, the mascot for a school who will be competing in a fencing tournament. So you get to fill in all of those weird details here on Design in the Dark. And tomorrow we'll be continuing this story, which I'm gonna read to you right now. The big game is coming up for Noah's school. 
uh, Noah's school and his rival, Knoxville Academy. Next week, we will see the two schools face off head to head to crown a champion of fencing. Noah has a plan to sneak into Knoxville Academy and steal the mascot bulldog, Baloney. He's unaware of the curse on the bulldog and has no idea of a super secret. Noah was uh, Noah School was founded this many years ago and is widely known for a very memorable thing. Um, and of course, its most famous graduate, Antonio Banderas, which you guys gave us today. Uh, get your signs ready and practice your school cheer and tomorrow you'll get to pick the school cheer. So we have a lot to fill in tomorrow and chat. You will get to fill in all of that nonsense and make it as crazy as you want. And and Jordan will be drawing that scene for us, including this awesome mascot baloney that we have created today. Um, Jordan, this looks great. Thanks, man. Uh, yeah, that was very quick. I would probably change some things, but I'm happy with that. And the cool thing about the vector brushes is that, like I said, we can scale it up and down and change it and all that. So um, there we go. Sweet. Um, so this is, uh, I think, pretty similar to your normal workflow, right, Jordan? Yeah, definitely uh, all of those steps to to define the shapes, find some reference, do some rough sketches, do the cleanup lines, and then the final illustration. Yep, uh, and so I'm gonna pull up one more time your uh, Instagram so you guys can follow along one more time at just iat.jordan. Um, some incredible work here. And looking at your Samurai Jack piece, Jordan, um, and Jordan and I are friends in real life, and I was what? over his house and saw That's some true. tracing paper on your desk. Um, is it literally you use the same process that you're using digitally in like actual, like real world sometimes? Oh yeah, uh, I love having a sketchbook that is filled with drawings and inspiration and I have some fun things that I'm working on in the future too. Yes, I know, I, I, love, I love coming over and just randomly like picking things up and seeing cool illustrations that I'm like, ooh, I can't wait to see this on social media. Um, yeah. So fantastic job, Jordan, we love this. Um, going into tomorrow, right? There's a lot yes. of question marks, a lot of who knows what's gonna happen. Um, do you have any thoughts going into tomorrow that maybe you're prepping yourself for that maybe you could encourage chat to like tune back in with uh, any thoughts of where we're going to go? So did you say that there, the rivals are fencing? Yes. So there's, it's a fencing tournament. Um, and Noah's breaking into the school to steal the bulldog mascot. Oh man. I think that we just need to do something with the cafeteria lunch like the food there i always i just some type of food fight okay. or you know it'll be fun. something fun like that yeah you know what would be fun is to do um somehow that there's a scene that like noah is fencing but there's like food and it's turned into like a like a like a kebab of something right that he's like oh, lunging, but then it has like the cafeteria food kind of on it um, yes. that'd be really fun so make sure that you tune in tomorrow chat and get those ideas brewing so we're going definitely to a cafeteria tomorrow is going to be the setting and so you get to fill in all the rest of the blanks with what we draw what we create and tomorrow instead of doing a character we're going to be building out a whole scene and i'm going to go back real quick jordan and just show everyone what we did last time as we created this scene here as the cover of our book and then two times ago um we created this illustration of the dragon that was shooting flaming tennis balls all kinds of crazy ideas from you so we'll be doing something similar tomorrow but our setting will obviously be a cafeteria um, and we'll be tying in some of those ideas of fencing um all right i think that's gonna be it for today jordan you excited how'd you feel about today good i really like today i hope that there's maybe one or two things that you guys can take and implement into your process of how you design and it's this isn't just going for character design so i hope that there's maybe one nugget in there that you can say oh i'm gonna start working on that uh, and thank you so much for watching. Thank you for, you know, giving us an hour to hang out with you. I hope that we, it was worth your time. Uh, and I'm excited about what we're going to do tomorrow. Yep. And chat, I'll leave the chat up for a couple of minutes. Let me know if you learned something today. Let me know what you learned from Jordan um, and how you're going to apply it maybe to your own workflow. Uh, Jordan, one more time. Can we show the sketches that we started out with just to show how far oh, yeah. we went? Okay. So we, it's this one. Here's some of our sketches that we started with and then our shape, which I think you guys all know, was we figured out that, that we figured out that a bulldog is basically just a square, but 
to break that up, we turned it into small rectangle, big rectangle. And then we kind of just played around with all those different shapes. We moved the eyeballs, we moved the eyeballs around. We made the nose smaller. We made it, you guys remember this one? We flipped it upside down. Yep. And um, we gave him so, yeah. flappy baloney cheeks. And flappy baloney cheeks, just can for we, you, Andrew. Can we somehow incorporate that into tomorrow when we're in the cafeteria? We need to have some kind of actual baloney incorporated as well. That could, oh, baloney. And that could be like some type of trophy too. It could be like a baloney yep. dog. I love that. <laughs> Um, all right. Well, thanks for tuning in, everyone. Again, same time, same place tomorrow um, at 2.30 p.m. Pacific time. You can tune in to watch Jordan on Design in the Dark. You can tune back in at 7 p.m. tonight to watch me do the Illustrator Daily Creative Challenge. Tomorrow morning at 11.30 for the Daily Creative Challenge. And I think that's it. Just just keep Adobe Live on all week and we'll give you great content. Um, and you'll watch me slowly wither away into nothing. Um, see you tomorrow on our next episode of Design in the Dark. Bye, Jordan. Bye, everybody. Bye.